It could be argued that the truest measure of success for any remotely kid-friendly genre movie is whether it gets a cartoon spin-off series. With that premise in mind, we've picked seven of our favorite cartoons based on movies to illustrate the unexpected ways that these type of adaptations tend to work. The thing to know before we start this list is that these cartoon adaptations often, although not always, tend to use the movies they're based on very loosely. Consider the Mighty Ducks cartoon. You remember the Mighty Ducks movies, right? Kids playing hockey, Emilio Estevez shows up, coaches underdog team to victory, hooray. Well, the Mighty Ducks cartoon is about ducks from a parallel universe who love hockey and are part of a rebellion against an evil lizard overlord played by Tim Curry because Tim Curry is the villain in every cartoon. Which is to say that the only thing these two properties have in common other than their name is hockey. Become one with the boards. You know, not only are these ducks mighty, they're really ducks! But Mighty Ducks, the animated series, is still considered by Disney to be loosely based on the movies and the subsequent real-life hockey team. And I'm telling you this because I can already hear people say the first entry on our list shouldn't count. But it should. I mean, I think it should. So The Jungle Book has gone through a multitude of adaptations, but for a long time the most popular and well-known version was the 1967 Disney animated feature about a boy raised by wolves and a bear named Baloo who tries to also raise him and protect him from tigers and snakes and, you know, other jungle various and sundries. Tailspin is an animated series where Baloo is a 1930s Pacific Islands bush pilot working with or against a bunch of other redressed characters from a jungle book as he struggles to keep a courier company afloat. Oh, yeah. Tailspin was actually originally going to be a DuckTales spinoff, but after a successful re-release of A Jungle Book in the early 90s, Blue took the role of Launchpad McQuack, and the rest is history. Pulling influence everywhere from Casablanca to Cheers, Tailspin is surprisingly mature, and its 1930s period setting made it distinct from any other cartoon during that time. And even though it sounds like an alternate universe fanfic featuring most of the characters from A Jungle Book, it is officially sanctioned by Disney. And if a show about alien ducks fighting lizards counts as a Mighty Ducks adaptation, then Tailspin can squeeze its way onto this list. Not just because of all those Jungle Book characters, but also because it's arguably one of the best things the Disney Afternoon ever produced. Now you might want to throw tomatoes at me over Tailspin's inclusion, but if you do, you'll only be giving me an obnoxious segue to our next cartoon. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, a 1978 movie where tomatoes come to life and devour mankind. So cartoony a premise that it's actually kind of shocking it was ever live action. Well, after the surprise success of the 1988 sequel Return of the Killer Tomatoes, those fruit that everyone thinks are vegetables finally became the cartoons they were always destined to be. John Astin reprises his role as Dr. Putrid T. Gangrene, actual name, and gets joined by voice acting legends like Cat Susie, Cam Clark, and Maurice LaMarche. I especially love the evil yet delightful Russian tomato stereotypes. All that, and one of the best theme songs of all time. Now look, not all cartoons are made for kids, and some nerd properties are even mostly slice of life. Like, for example, the animated series based on Kevin Smith's seminal classic, Clerks. Crime scene. Nobody enters. I work here, sir. Poor bastard. It's pretty gruesome. They tore this place apart. Animals. Actually, officer, this is how we left it last night. Dante and Randall are reunited along with Jay and Silent Bob as they all go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an evil Alec Baldwin. Charles Barkley and Brian Cranston also involved, but not Pikachu. That is not Pikachu, please don't sue. Canceled after only two episodes, Clerks is way better than ABC gave it credit for. It was so good, it had a clip show by episode two. And Patrick Swayze owns a pet shop. And a bear drives a car, how can that be? 
And while we're talking about cartoons who manage to at least temporarily feature their live action actors, there's everyone's favorite time travel story that isn't Doctor Who or Back to the Future, Bill and Ted. Yes, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures for its first season brought Alex Winter, Keanu Reeves, and even George Carlin back to the time traveling phone booth. And without shoes, those Yankee soldiers will lose the Civil War. The North will fall, and you'll be sucking up harmony grits at the cozy corner. Whoa, we cannot let that egregious chain of events befall our favorite curbside eatery, Ted. Rufus, we donate our most worthy gym shoes to this righteous cause. And they use it to meet Shakespeare, Calamity Jane, Babe Ruth, the Wright Brothers, Mark Twain, Lady Godiva. Basically, if there's a historical figure, Bill and Ted met them. Dude. But okay, enough animated series that are anything like their live action counterparts. Let's talk about the best wild departure from the source material an animated series ever produced. We all remember that time psychopathic undead Michael Keaton tricked recently deceased Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis into releasing him from their miniature city so he could wreak havoc on the Dietz family and then try to marry an extremely young Winona Ryder, right? Well, what about a version where instead of unexpected and unlawful nuptials with a minor, the ghost with the most just became a friend? That, in a nutshell, is the animated series version of Beetlejuice, produced by Tim Burton and featuring a cast of skeletons, dancing spiders, sandworms, and more corny dad puns than you can shake a stick at. I'm flat broke. I'm fit as a fiddle, strong as an ox. The Beetlejuice cartoon was so good and so popular that it ran for 94 episodes and aired on both ABC and Fox, one of the only TV shows to ever do so. Joining shows like Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life, Beetlejuice was part of a wave of sophomore gross-out cartoons that dominated the hearts and minds of every kid in the 90s. But seriously, it's like 90% dad puns. Get on the ball! I just freeze up! I'm gonna have to charge it a flat rate! And if we're talking about movies that wound up being surprisingly loved by kids, there's no better example than Ghostbusters. It's funny because Slimer and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and all the other goofy stuff from that movie makes perfect sense for a kid, but everything else is pretty adult. Ghostbusters 2 aimed itself more towards kids, but it's the animated series, the real Ghostbusters, that did it best. We live here. Yes, again, human. Let's clean the house, boys. We have guns. So do we, nail them. And it wasn't easy either. Without likeness rights, the Ghostbusters couldn't look like the actors who played them, but still had to somehow evoke the essence of the characters, which they nailed. I mean, the show is so iconic that even Kate McKinnon's hair in that new Ghostbusters movie is clearly inspired from Egon's and the real Ghostbusters. This is my personal favorite entry on this list. The Ghostbusters fight Sam Hain, the Boogeyman, the Sandman, Cthulhu, and the show even explains why Slimer is their friend and why their costumes are different colors. Real Ghostbusters is great for continuity, scares, and wear chickens, which Egon turns into at one point. But there's one animated series that feels like it has to take the number one spot. And no, it's not Batman the Animated Series, although I did think about it. That cartoon isn't remotely based on any of the movies, so it doesn't count. I'm sorry, I know. I love it too. But the number one spot has got to go to the best thing to come out of the Star Wars prequels, The Clone Wars. Thinking what I'm thinking? Almost certainly not. It's like we're doing this the hard way. Starting ejection sequence. Star Wars certainly tried to have cartoons. There were droids cartoons, Ewok cartoons, but those were not... Well, they're not on the list, let's put it that way. But the multiple iterations of the Clone Wars are a tie for number one, because in addition to giving us more interesting versions of Anakin and young Obi-Wan, Count Dooku, Mace Windu, and Padme, we also got brand new characters like Ahsoka Tano and Asajj Ventress, easily two of the coolest women in the Star Wars universe. It expanded the Star Wars universe and made it more epic and more emotional than it ever had been before. The Clone Wars, whether it's 2D or CGI animation, is one of the greatest stories to ever come out of Star Wars, and it definitely belongs on the top of this list. But that's just seven. There are tons of others that might be your favorites. Jumanji, Men in Black, Back to the Future, The Mask, The Mummy, Robocop. There was even a Team Wolf animated series. They could have made it on this list. Maybe they're on yours. 
Let us know what animated series based on movies you love best. And thank you for watching.